you know, what difference does that really make? At the end of the day, I'm still a man on a bicycle, still facing all the issues of aging, still facing all the issues of fears, doubts, loneliness that every other man on earth has ever faced, including the prophets. It doesn't make me any better or any worse. The fact is it just gives me an ability to see things in a certain way and, and broadcast them on, on radio and write them down in books. That's about it. It doesn't make me into some saint with a halo. So that's an interesting statement unto itself. Of course, in every generation, there are people who have prophetic qualities. I'm not the only one. Uh, what does that really mean at the end of the day? Well, if you agree with them, you say, wow, the guy can see things I can't see. So let's listen to him. Of course, it's prophetic. It's, not, it's like a given. It's not just hot air the way the left would have you say. So you look at, you look at Ezekiel. You look at the other prophets, Jeremiah and the Bible. They also have the same issues, whatever they were. Aging, loneliness, boredom, fears, hopes, dreams, wishes, memories, dreams. We're all human. That's what unites all of us. And that brings us to the point of the caller po point of the, of the uh, hour. And the, the minute I get back, we're going to take some callers, including a caller from Israel who was a soldier on the ground. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. I don't know how they did that movie. Welcome back. What was it called? American something or other. All right, my number one point was that the Russian incursion into Syria is a good thing for world stability and especially good for the Middle East and doubly especially good for Israel. Jonathan's calling from Israel. Jonathan, welcome to the program. What's on your mind? Hi. Uh, first of all, I'm calling from uh, Judea and Samaria in the West Bank, and I have to say I've been serving for about two years, and it's such an honor to, to speak with you. Um, uh, well, I don't, know how you, I don't know how you people put up with civilians being stabbed and not cracking down on them. I don't understand how a country survives letting people do this to civilians. Women, children, stab them, cut their throats, and put up with liberal garbage. You have a very bad situation in Israel with your Peace Now uh, uh, Quisling movement that has undermined the state of Israel itself for the last 20 years. Of course. That's the worst thing, is the, the self-hating Jew has always been one of our worst uh, problems. But, you know, speaking of diversity in Israel, which is what you were speaking about with the uh, massive wave of Russian immigration, look, I'm an American Israeli serving in the West Bank, and Israel right now is on the forefront of the fight for Western civilization. Um, and, you know, I serve with Arab Christians and uh, Jews and uh, from all stripes and all colors and all people and Ethiopian Jews and Christians, and we fight together. And uh, from left and right, people are being stabbed. Uh, women and children are being murdered in the streets. And there's such a moral relativism from the White House. There's such a moral relativism from UNESCO. And yeah, don't expect anything from... Look, Israel's always only had one friend in the world, and that was the United States, until it was taken over from within. And Barack Obama today has the same mentality as the United Nations has always had toward Israel, which is that the Jews are always wrong and Israel has no right to exist. So don't expect anything to change from him. He is exactly what you think he is. Uh, the fact is, though, how would you, if you were advising your defense chief, what would you do to stop the stabbings in Israel? It's, uh, it's an incredibly hard problem because not only are they using grown men to stab women and children, they're using the women. There was a story of a 13-year-old boy who stabbed someone that I personally know. Um, it's an incredibly hard situation because you never know where they're going to come from. And there is an incredibly uh, strong paranoia in the streets, and people don't know what to do. And the only well, uh, hold, hold, well, wait a minute. Th this fear is exactly what the Palestinian terrorists want to induce in the Israeli population. But I've got to tell you, looking at it from the outside, in the safety of the United States of America, and I admit that I'm sitting here in a bubble, looking in from the outside. I'm not in the same position that you are or the average Israeli. But I will tell you, this is happening for a reason. It's a wink from the White House. They were told to start a new intifada, and there is a reason for it. They want Israel to give up Judea and Samaria so Obama can leave office with yet another notch on his belt of destroying Judeo-Christianity around the globe. Absolutely. Abs you're absolutely right. And I'll tell you, even uh, throughout this paranoia, we will not be going anywhere. We will stay here and we will fight. 
Well, you have nowhere to go. That's the point. You can't move to Delaware. You have nowhere to move. You can't go west. You're trapped. There's nowhere to go. And eventually Israel's going to have to fight back. And I'm, a, I'm afraid to say to you it's going to be biblical. It's going to be an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. And you're going to have to start doing to them what they're doing to you. Absolutely. But every time we do it, you have that moral relativism. You have Russia flattening cities in Syria. And uh, we have collateral damage in Gaza and the West Bank. And uh, the whole uh, world... Well, then close Israel off to the news. Kick them out of your country. Throw the left-wing vermin out and do what you have to do to save your people. Or you'll see another holocaust in your own life. Get rid of all of the, the quizlings from the American and European Union. They hate themselves. They hate their own country. They hate their own race. They hate the religion of their parents. And they will destroy you. Kick them out and do what you have to do to save your people. Or there'll be another holocaust. Uh, Joe Biden is a man who has devoted uh, his entire life to public service like and you. to the well-being of working families uh, and the middle class. Right, right. Uh, he made a difficult decision uh, based on the needs of his family and his view mm -hmm. of his mm -hmm. future, and I respect uh, the decision that he made. I want to thank Joe All Biden. Right, got the picture. Now, he's very, very, he's tr tr presidential now, really dignified speeches. and They cleaned up his act a bit. The spittle is gone. They modified the meds. They uh, took him off the, uh, the spittle-producing meds, put him on another one. I think it's the one that produces spittle on the side of the mouth is lithium. And I suspect they took him off lithium and put him on straight old Prozac to control the spittle. Very presidential, though, now. Speaking differently, got him a new suit. No more Robert Hall. No more used suits. I think they're buying new suits now for thirty nine ninety nine. Buy one, get seven free. Anyway, what are you going to do? This is the political world that we live in. You've got insane leadership across the entire Western Hemisphere. Western Europe, America, insane. And it's getting worse by the day. you got the hag waiting in the wings. Like she's all new and fresh, like no one ever heard of her before. I don't mind woman. Get, get me a woman. Wait, this one. Never heard of her. Who's Hillary? Oh, she's fresh. They cleaned her up. There were no scandals associated with the Clinton family for eight years. No, no, no. She's brand new. We don't know who, who she is or what she's going to do. We have no idea. She's going to save America. She's going to come in and clean things up with the rolling pin. Or the broom, whatever she has. How in the world could people fall for it? I just don't get it. I don't get it. Pot use is double. Obese, stupid, drug addicts, crackheads. A mad country falling apart at the seams. And in Europe? As I said, Hitler invaded other countries. Merkel's invading her own country. Same psychopath. She's doing it strictly to make certain that her party retains power forever. It's all power madness. She'd burn her country to the ground to hold on to power in the very, very same manner that that maniac did. In other words, Hitler did it one way. He imposed his Nazi Germanic view on other countries by invading them. She's doing the opposite. She's invading her own country. But it's for the same reasons. Power madness. Look, it was said best by the English, the smartest people in the history of the world at the time, when that great, I think it was Lord Acton, I'm not sure who wrote, power corrupts, absolute power corrupts absolutely. Whether it applies to uh, Obama or Merkel, any one of them, once they get in power, they will never let go of it, ever. If she were arrested for what she did in Benghazi and was taken away in handcuffs, she'd run from prison and win. And she's like Evita Peron. Evita, Evita, Evita Clinton. Same exact thing. She's got the vote locked up. That's the problem. It's as simple as that. 855-407-282 is the phone number. We got one open line. Margarita, LOB Radio. Welcome to the Savage Nation. What's on your mind, Margarita? Yes, yeah, spot on, Dr. Savage, about everything, but especially about what you said about Merkel. Um, I want to also um, bring up the fact we should not forget uh, where she is originally from and where she spent her formative years. And, uh, you know, in, obviously in, in East Germany. And now she's, she's selling... But wait, Margarita, I understand you. Why would her East German roots be dictating her madness? I think it's partially responsible because 
a lot of uh, a lot of them have not they they did not um, work through the the Nazi past the way the West Germans have. Well, hold on. This is so important to me. It, it's a subtlety that I don't quite understand immediately. I'm sure I can grasp it, and my listeners can. Explain it in a little more detail. The West Germans have worked through the guilt, and they're not as guilty, so they don't feel as obligated to bend over backwards, in other words, for example, in this case, the Syrian Muslims. But you're saying the East Germans are still guilty from the Holocaust, so they're still bending over backwards and doing crazy things, such as flooding their own nation with Syrian Muslims? They, they are, uh, also they are still very um, more fascist than I, than I would like, just because they were under communism. I mean, it's the same. same oh, you're saying the, the instincts of the leadership is more autocratic of, amongst those who come out of the East German background. Is that what you're saying, right? Exactly. And, you know, when she first came to power, I, I was on a home visit. I asked my cousin of what... Uh, you know, I come from southern Germany, very different uh, a place. And, uh, and what he thought of her, he said, you know, I don't really want to vote socialist or left. But he said, I just don't trust her. And ah, so she, I, she, people don't understand that Merkel didn't run as a socialist. Merkel ran as a centrist, a center-right candidate. And she ruled as a center-right candidate. I am bewildered by what they have, how they've turned her so quickly. Well, I I think I think but, uh, there is much more behind it. I think she, just like so many others, are beholden to. They are all one gang uh, together, beholden to to somebody or something. I'm not a conspiracy uh, conspiracy theorist. I don't believe in that. But yet there is just something we are going on. Look at it in the biggest protests in Germany against uh, uh, this this whole uh, business now is in a uh, former East German Dresden, okay? And in there, there uh, that's where the, the, the party that's protesting against her and uh, against all the so-called asylum seekers. Uh, but, but Margarita, isn't Dresden overrun by folks of the Muslim persuasion? Well, uh, yes, but that's where the biggest protest by by the by the natives are, and they get uh, they get uh, brutally put down by the government and 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 and, and everything. Yeah, why is the German government beating up and arresting conservatives who believe in their own nation's identity, borders, language, and culture? How does a country turn on itself like that? Uh, well, the very same elements, as I said, in my opinion, are going on in this country, where nationalists, uh, traditionalists, conservatives, however you want to put it, are seen as the enemy of the Obama administration. How is it that the people who most identify with their own nation are now seen as the enemy of the leadership of their own nations? It's, I don't know. You, you, I'm, I, I'm looking for an answer. I'm getting it doubly. I'm getting... Well, I, I mean, I've given some glib answers, such as liberalism is a mental disorder, but I'll, I'll elaborate a little further. They are power mad. Power corrupts. Absolute power corrupts. Absolutely. The liberal will use any means necessary. Paralegal, it doesn't matter. Robbing votes, stuffing the ballot box, bringing in illegal aliens to vote in order to hold on to power. So it's all about power and money. There's the answer. They have no respect for democracy. They have no respect for the rule of law. They are fundamentally a gangster regime. Margarita, stay on the line. It's all explained in government zero, no borders, no language, no culture. It's that simple. KBOI Radio, Brian, go ahead. You're up on the Savage Nation. Fire away to the airwaves. Dr. Savage, thank you for your time in advance. Um, also, apologize about my voice. We got some allergies going on. Anyway, um, hey, you were right on the money with your show uh, yesterday several times, but one comment in particular, which I thought for a long time, the Liberal Party, as you said, uh, they invent problems before they exist. Uh, oh, wait, let me, I have the note right here. Hillary invents grievances before they exist. That's the exact quote. Yeah, exactly. Well, um, well, for instance, global warming, shoot, there's so much stuff uh, it just makes my, blows my mind. Well, Hillary invents grievances before they exist. She's playing the little woman who's being attacked because she's an innocent woman by the evil white male. Isn't that her new game? Isn't that her game with Barbara Boxer in the supporting role? 
of the contralto on the stage with her, that the poor woman is being attacked by the evil Republicans only because she's a woman, not because she's a corrupt hag? <laughs> well, you're all, all right, my friend, you know. Papio 